As Kane began to take shape, RKO assigned art director Perry Ferguson to the project. As well as the set designs, Ferguson produced detailed storyboards, working to Wells' descriptions of the setups he wanted. You can see how closely Wells kept to these storyboards when he got into the studio. Even from this 45 second sequence near the beginning, it's clear that Wells got the best out of his art department. But the greatest individual contribution to the look of Kane has to be that of the cinematographer, Greg Toland. Wells acknowledges this in the credits. He shares a title card with his cameraman. One day in the office they said there's a man called Toland waiting to see you. And uh, he was, of course, the leading cameraman. And he said, I want to make your picture. And I said, well, that's wonderful. Why? I don't know anything about movies. And he says, that's why I want to do it. He said, because I think if you're left as alone as much as possible, we're going to have a movie that looks different. I'm tired of working with people who, who know too much about it. And uh, he was the one who said, uh, uh, we came to a moment in the first week of shooting where, uh, or no, the second week, where I suddenly was told by somebody that it was not the job of the director to do all the lighting. Up to then, I'd been doing all the lighting with Tolan behind me, balancing it and so on, but saying, don't tell anybody, you see. Then I had to go and apologize to him and everything. Then, then, then another awful, awful moment came when I didn't understand directions. And that was because I had learn how to make movies by running stagecoach every night for a month because if you will look at stagecoach you will see that the indians attack left to right and then they attack right to left and so on in other words there's no direction followed every rule is broken in the picture and i sat and watched it 45 times so of course when i was suddenly told in an over shoulder shot that i had to look camera left instead of camera right i said no because i was standing here that argument you know so we closed the picture down and uh, about two in the afternoon and went back to my house and Toland showed me how that worked. And I said, well, God, there's a lot of stuff here I don't know. And he said, there's nothing I can't teach you in three hours. And that's when I said that, which has been taken as a, as a very um, pompous statement that I learned everything in three hours. It was Toland's idea that anybody can learn it in three hours and that he taught it to me in three hours. Everything else is if you're any good or not. You don't have to look hard for a shot in Citizen Kane to prove the technical brilliance of Wells' collaboration with Greg Toland. This famous shot is a combination of complicated crane movements, flyaway scenery and optical effects. At the end of the shot, there's a dissolve disguised in a flash of lightning. Wells and Tolan never claimed to have invented new techniques. What they did was to combine existing ones into a virtuoso catalogue of effects. Film sets with complete ceilings, overlapping sound, deep focus photography, expressionist lighting. And if you doubt Wells' own contribution to the look of Kane, as some critics have, look first at the lighting designs for his 1937 theatre production, Julius Caesar. This is three years before he went to Hollywood. And here's the sequence in the Thatcher Library from Citizen Kane. Pages 83 to 142. I thought you could do anything with a camera mm -hmm. that the eye could do or the imagination could do. And if you come up from the bottom in the film business, you're taught all the things that the cameraman doesn't want to attempt for fear he will be criticized for having failed. Yes. And in this case, I had a cameraman who didn't care if he was criticized if he failed, and I didn't know that there were things you couldn't do. So I, anything I could think up in my dreams, I attempted to photograph.
What are you doing? Oh. Constraints in the budget were turned to advantage too. Originally, these scenes were intended to be played in a living room off the main hall of Xanadu. They couldn't afford to build the living room set, but transferring the scenes to this vast echoing hallway perfectly emphasized the distance between Kane and his wife. For the ride to the picnic, they couldn't find a wild enough landscape to shoot in, so they matted one in. Other exteriors were part set, part painted glass shots. 